Wow, this is different. Is this different or what? This thing is a tank. I think this boat is very salty and really kind of fun to be in. I'd, I'd take a trip right now down that intercoastal waterway in a minute. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Hey, Randy! Captain! Where are you, buddy? I'm over here. Are you here somewhere? Oh, oh there you are! Hey! Welcome to Great Bay Marina in Newington, New Hampshire. About 1950, a little bit after the war was over, there was a, a, a gentleman, sort of a uh, entrepreneurial type who was over in Hong Kong. Robert Newton was the uh, general director of Briarley's uh, Soda Pop factory. And this factory was located on the Mokshong Road. The Mokshong Road was a road that divided the Hong Kong airport uh, main runway and a group of workers in buildings. Now Mokshong actually means woodworker. So one day Robert was looking out the window of his factory and he noticed a vacant lot. And he said, what could you do with that lot? And he thought about it, we've got woodworkers, and on the other side behind him, there was access to Junk Bay, which is a body of water right there in Hong Kong. And so he said, how about building boats? So he gathered a bunch of workers together, and uh, along with his sons, John and Witt, they started American Marine. In 1962, uh, the Newtons hired Ken Smith, Kenneth Smith, to come in and design uh, this boat called the Spray. Then two years later, they came out with uh, the first Grand Banks 36, and they abandoned all the other boat building they were doing. The interesting thing about all these boats, too, is that uh, they were all built out of wood. The hulls were inch and a quarter thick mahogany. Some people think, oh, I don't want a wooden boat. Well, let's not talk about wooden boats. No reason not to. This particular boat today we're going to look at, she's uh, known as the uh, 1966 Grand Banks 36 foot classic. She's 35 feet overall. Uh, it's got about a 12 foot beam, four foot draft. She has a relatively new engine. The current owner says that she has about 2,000 hours on it. And it's basically uh, a Ford Lehman uh, later model, about 100 and 20 horsepower, I think, 125 horsepower, give or take. It's all been gone through recently and in, in very good condition. Okay, want to take she? a look at it? Yeah, where is she? You can't quite see her from here, but you want to follow me? Yeah, let's go. Well, I had to chase Sea Dog, who just took off, and she knows that our wonderful sponsor, the good people of Undoes It, uh, have asked us to, to take a look at this marine kit. It includes boat wash, non skid cleaner, salt wash, protectant, and black streak remover. We found a perfect sample to work on for the non-skid cleaner. And the, the, the trick with their non-skid cleaner here is to eliminate the dirt and the grime, get that off of the boat without removing the waxes and shines and uh, coating of the non-skid itself. How do you use it? You want to wet down the area you're going to put it on. So I'm going to put a little on the deck there, and that just gets rid of some of the, the big lumps. So here we go. Here's a little ounce or two to sprinkle on there a little bit. Now they'd like us to wait for about two to four minutes. They suggest we take a little brush and uh, brush this. But let's see what happens here when we start doing this. Now we're just brushing down into the non-skid. You know there's something very gratifying about cleaning your boat, isn't there? It's I like it when you clean my boat. <laughs> I know. I noticed. Uh, that's more gratifying. I, I'm gonna rinse this off. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> that is really impressive. I've never seen anything clean non-skid like that. These people can manage to do this with, with, with having a biodegradable product that's uh, chlorine free, that is phosphate free, ammonia free, and hydrocarbon free. So no matter where this leaks out, onto the land beside your boat or in the water, all the little creatures on earth will not be disturbed by undoes it. So how do people get the product? All you have to do is look down underneath the episode and you'll find a link to the undoes it people and they will send the product right to your door. I really want to do the rest of the boat. Can we do the rest of the boat? <laughs> we have episodes to get back to. All right. Well, we're going to go back to the episode. Special thank you to the kind people at Undoes It for being such faithful sponsors of Captain Q Yacht Hunter. 
this is pretty amazing. Nice going, Sea Dog. You had a good find here. Wow, this is different. Is this different or what? This has no. This only has one mast, doesn't it? It does have a mast. It has a mast, but it's not for sailing, it's for steading the boat. And it's not designed to drive the boat at all or get you home. It's just to help you slow down the motion of the boat in a seaway. And these boats are very good in a seaway. They have a hard shine, meaning the line running right down where the top side meets the bottom, and it comes down and there's a hard edge down there, okay? Which gives it a relatively flat bottom. This is edge fastened. And then, and then caulked in between. And uh, those are inch and a quarter planks on there. And they get a little larger when they go down to the garboard area. Does the next owner have to think about anything with regards to the seam? Well, uh, one interesting thing with these boats is that uh, to insure the boat, it's a wooden boat, and insurance companies uh, will, the underwriters may often ask you to uh, have the boat surveyed every four years. And that's the case with this particular boat. And what they do, among the things that they do, besides pulling it out of the water and looking at everything, is they'll actually remove fastenings that are holding the planks to the ribs in the boat and so forth. If it's starting to get eaten away, that would be an indicator that uh, the boat might need to have some work done. Now this boat has been, uh, since they've had it, I think surveyed, oh, maybe three times, hauled every four years, and uh, had the fasteners pulled and checked on it, and everything's been solid. So the, the original, these were some of the very original boats built in Hong Kong, and uh, they've just been very strong and long lasting. Look at this bulwark, we're talking about bulwarks. Look at this puppy right here. This is a good foot, foot high right here. Look at the bow pulpit. Oh yeah. You know, that's so big up there, you could put your own table up there and a chair maybe. I what like do you that. think? I like that idea. And have tea. Great big heavy, that's got to be a 70 pound uh, Danforth anchor. Randy, come on up here in the bow. Oh. Uh, contrary to, to your request, I found a really comfortable place to sit. Yeah, it seems like those are magnetic for they you. They are, they just, they, I go by and, it, 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 and the buttocks call. This is a displacement hull. This is the same basically as a sailboat that we've all been looking at. And she's ballasted below and, and she's got a, a, her own deep fin that goes back and draws four feet on this boat. So uh, with the plumb bow straight down and her flat sides and so forth and her hard shines, it's going to be a very comfortable ride. He's got two separate lines. He uses a, uh, a piece of chain here on uh, his CQR, which is on the port side. That's a, a pretty heavy bunch of uh, chain right there. A little lighter gauge on his Danforth up forward. And that brings it right into the Wildcat. And notice each one of these has their own storage for chain. Tell me about the Wildcat again. Uh, right here, we've seen this before in other boats. And it's got a locking device here so it doesn't let go and just drop the chain. And uh, uh, this, is, this is powered. Um, and there's a, uh, uh, a lock here on the side to let it freewheel to when you, when you want to release it. Oh, I, like the, so, uh, I like the legend here. Well, he's got uh, markers on here to tell you how much chain is out. And uh, it says bands that may be just painted bands, uh, 50 feet for two bands, three bands, 75, and so forth. Uh, so that lets you know how much you want. And normally you want, oh, five to seven to one scope. Meaning if you're in 10 feet of water, you might want to have 50 feet of chain out. This is nylon braid, I guess he's got on there, which will allow the line to stretch when, when it gets that tug, here's the boat up here, the line's way out here, and it gets a big tug from the wind, it's going to try and stretch that line, and it will soften the movement of the boat. Nice big Samson post. Boy, you could tow this boat all day long with this guy. That's King Samson. That's King Samson. And we have Rande's uh, super bowsprit on there. He's going for it. Let me leave you that so I don't... Uh, that may be that the end of the camera, the end of this shoot, as Randy goes out. Oh, yeah. There what do you go. think? How do you like that there? Oh yeah, it fits well. It is swell, isn't there's, it? There's room for more. I'm noticing here the little flag on the bow here. We have a Marine on board. All right. The owner is a Marine. Thank you for your service, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your service. Let's head on aft. Something else a little different on this particular boat is there's a well down here. You see this? This is considered a well. I'm stepping down into it. A lot of these boats would have a flush after deck. And the reason they, they cut the well in here 
was to give you uh, a, a access to the after cabin without having it up so high that it became more of an escape hatch. You won't find this on the newer boats, but it's uh, it's kind of nice and gives you a little more break from the wind. There is uh, storage all under here for your your deck cleaning gear and so forth. This we have a nice heavy duty hatch. The tank is used to be right here dead center and they've moved the tanks outboard. Here's the rudder right down there and she's got an autopilot on her, Simrad autopilot. So it's all very accessible. A little break here in the uh, uh, in the taffrail to allow us to just step over the side and just one step down for an easy entry to a dinghy or a swim platform down here. Look at that. Isn't that nice? One thing notice too and you'll see more of it when we go topside how this has all been served uh, with line and so forth to give it that old ship look. You'd find these on a square rigger. Go see the Constitution in, New York, in Boston. These are a set of lazy jack lines coming down on the mast for the sail. It's all three strand line which again is very um, salty. <laughs> okay, it's, we don't need braided line on here. Uh, this is all three strand. Probably Dacron in most cases but some nylon too. There's a nice boom crutch right here so when you lower this when this thing wants to come in and you want to settle it down, you can just tie it, lash it right down to this, this crutch right here. There's room for a dinghy to sit on the, uh, on the cabin house here, right here, and uh, it's got tie downs for it, so that'll sit very nicely. And if you notice, there are some, uh, some blocks and tackles right there, which you can use to lift the dinghy and swing it over the side of the boat. The little sea pup has kind of escaped away for a second. Get out of here, get out of here, what are you doing? Uh, is sea pup her name? I don't know, what do you think? I kind of like sea pup. It flows, and I think a number of people out there mention sea pups. <laughs> so why don't we go with sea pup? So this is sea pup's first sea trial. <laughs> so this is all recessed, and it gives you a nice easy step up with two steps, one, two, and then you're on the deck. Come on up, Rande. Oh, thanks. The current owner uh, had this bridge all redone. Originally they just had a wall along and they didn't have any place to put gear and so forth. So he's just uh, created this shelf effect in here for stuff. And if you notice, and right now they're all on, all his gears is his autopilot and his GPS, radar, everything is all turned on and running. Engine controls right here uh, beside him. He's got these cute little things here. He's got a bunch of these below, you'll see that. This is nothing more than a plug to go over that engine stop button. And the reason is they had the horn right next to the stop button. And he was fearful that at night, if he came up and he wanted to stop the engine, the horn kept honking. But there's engine temperature, uh, the generator, oil pressures, engine controls. We've got two controls here. We've got your throttle and your your gears, and uh, I like the the old bronze uh, uh, control base. Isn't that nice? Kind of like old shippy stuff. He's put up a new uh, a windbreak, and that allows the wind to hit it and shoot up over your head. Trawlers are really fun because they sort of go one speed. You pick the speed. This will do eight and a half knots, and she'll drink mm, two and a half gallons of, of fuel an hour. I like the comfort of the uh, rattan chairs back here. Oh, I don't want to move right now. <laughs> we do have a Charlie Noble, and you'll find when we get below decks, you're going to see a, a really nice wood-burning fireplace. <laughs> Look up at the overhead here. Is that is that gorgeous? Yeah. Or what? And uh, uh, the stained glass. We've got real stained glass here on this, and there's a couple other spots on the boat you'll see too what's been put in. And how's that for a little fireplace over there? That is handsome. You know, you just can, he puts uh, small miniature uh, compressed wood in there, I think it is, and it just cooks the whole boat right out. This table we're sitting at, this can do a number of things. Uh, it can go way down for a cocktail table of sorts. Uh, it will also come up higher to be a chart table for the helmsman. Uh, so it's all on this piston drive down here. And the leaves, of course, fold down. It doesn't make a bunk? It does, does not make a bunk, no. Yeah. It's owner. Put, uh, or, ordered somebody to manufacture a metal wheel and then he's wrapped it for comfort and for grip. Uh, it has hydraulic steering on the boat and that's different than our push-pull style uh, cable. 
Uh, they actually replaced that on here. That was uh, cable originally, but then they went to the hydraulic. This is the rudder indicator. Now, as opposed to having a kingpin spoke up at the top, uh, this indicator will show. I'm turning the wheel to starboard, yep, and so it's right down here. You see that? Yep. That little white line coming out? That will tell me how far my, my rudder is over to one side. There are two separate radars on the boat. The old uh, Ray Marine was the original, and then there's a, uh, a Garmin that system that came in that linked up better with all the other stuff he had on board. So this is a backup. A nice big uh, helmsman's chair over here. And look. Once look, again. Look what I found. It's magnetic. Oh, yes. Here's the little plugs here. You see? And that one is the main engine. And, and he's got uh, plugs here for the generator. I think it's a 7KW Northern Lights generator uh, that was just overhauled. We're looking at a propane stove and oven over there. And we always like to check this, don't we? Yeah. Have they cooked? Uh, a little bit. I, I really like the wood uh, countertop. Some grooves here, put your knives, because you don't want knives flying around. We don't really care where the sink is on this boat, do we? Because we're not tipping over. Right. We're not heeling over one way or the other like sailboats. We'd like to have it on the center line. It's got hot and cold pressurized water and uh, a microwave you run right off your inverter or your generator. Now, this has a front opening refrigerator. We're going to see a little freezer unit that's an ancillary piece that they put on board the boat. Uh, drawer storage. Uh, this is one nice thing too, the, the uh, dovetail fittings on drawers. And I don't know if you notice how easily those went in and out. And here, this is kind of like home, don't you? Always have this little flip down thing in front of your sink. So we have really nice sliding windows here. And talk about ventilation. Oh. Hello, Randall. Hello. <laughs> and there's a screen for that. They've got a little special spot right there. Look at that, just for random paper cups. I'm gonna go back to the table just for a second. This is kind of cool. Look, it's got a regular old hatch uh, hook here, but you can pop that out and you can play cribbage, All right. gin, poker, whatever. But then, look at that. Put your coffee cups right in there and they won't go away. Come on below here. A little different, some modifications made here for the current owners. This was uh, a standard V-berth arrangement, like so many uh, sailboats that we've been on. And uh, you would have a regular V-berth over here and it came up here and it took in the whole area. So what they've done, they have got pipe berths. That's a pipe berth right there. It's two pieces of pipe holding canvas and you pop it open and it actually makes a fairly wide uh, berth for your occasional guests. And they did that to give themselves just more room in here because this has become a major shower room. I'm going to show that in a second. But right now, here is the freezer. This is plumbed into the boat, oh, wired so, into the boat. And so this it's powered. Works, it's a... And it's powered. And uh, it's kind of a little strange. But remember, we're on an old boat, 55 years old. So uh, they didn't make a lot of accommodations for some of these things that we all need today. Right? So... If you look over on the on the uh, on the starboard side here, you'll see a shower. Um, the owner of this boat is is quite tall. He's six four, and he can stand in there, and have uh, still have headroom. There is a porta potty there to simplify life on board. But there's also a second head. We'll see aft. All this was built in here, and they took out uh, what were just quarter berths here. A little grab rail here. Good places to grab everywhere in the boat. Let's head aft real quickly. What do you say? I'm going to head down here uh, into the after cabin. Originally, these boats had berths, port, and starboard. And they wanted one large queen size, so they have this, and this takes it right out to the side of the hull. And they lowered the whole berth and get even a bigger. This is bordering on King Queen. <laughs> it's big. Um, got a little table here to set you drink something. And uh, they like. Uh, don't, are not crazy about drawers. They like big storage areas. And look at the size of this. You got a companion way up to the uh, the uh, after deck that we've seen. You got the stained glass. That's kind of pretty, isn't it? I like the overhead. It's it's, it's painted out at back here. Notice that in in the uh, main uh, saloon, it's varnished. But I like having the white bag. It brings more light into this cabin and really gives you a, a spacious feeling here. Right. Now we have a head back here too. Let me switch places with you a second there. All right, sounds good. Actually, here's a here's an interesting picture. You want to scope in on this. This was the, this boat that we're on right now is this boat in the Motor Boating Magazine from 1968. She was uh, uh, one of the power boats of the year. 
How do you like that? That very same boat we're on right. right now. Now, here's our head. It's good size. And uh, as we like to find on, on a boat like this, a nice composting head. They love that. They think that's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And remember where we first saw that down in uh, Massachusetts on... Um, Oh, which boat was it? I can't quite recall. That was the Nimble 30. Yes, the by, Nimble 30. By, by Ted Brewer. Uh, we've got uh, pressure hot and cold water here. And oh, look, again, this is the second faucet we've turned on recently. And we actually get water out of them, not just antifreeze. Um, nice tile on the cabinet. I like these raised frogs. They're cute. But anyway, this is a nice size um, uh, shower area. Froggy, froggy, froggy. <laughs> I like, the little, I like the little drawer, just size enough for your toothpaste. They took the shower out of here simply because uh, with the shower curtain and everything in there, they like, they like to have the bigger space, which, so they made that big shower room up in the forepeak. So there is no shower here, but there is great, and I know you could put one back in if you wanted a shower back in this. There's stowage in these lockers we're going by, by the way, and oh, just here's a, a hanging locker, a small hanging locker. And this whole section here can be closed up with this uh, door right here, and there's a hatch. It has its own hatch that will close this as well. Come forward, and this has two latches on it. There we go. Okay. Uh, Whoa. There. So we have a uh, basically a Ford Lehman engine here, 120 horse. She has about 2,000 hours on this engine, and this engine room is so clean just looking at everything down there that I can see, the, the strainers over to your right there, um, the bills, the general area, the cleanliness of the engine. Uh, I think this, this engine has been pretty well maintained. You can see the generator on the other side. Yep, that looks familiar. That's a 7KW, do you have a Northern Lights? I do. So 7KW Northern Lights, and we're in a 12 foot beam. So you've got a, a room down there right now that's about, oh gosh, 12 by 12 is almost 144 square feet of room down there. So, Rende, uh, this has been an interesting afternoon to see a really salty old Grand Banks, huh? 1966, built out of wood, solid mahogany wood. This thing is a tank, and she's been fine-tuned for the current owners. I was surprised you uh, you picked another trawler. We haven't done one in a while and... Well, we did the, we did the Nordhaven trawler, remember? Yeah. That was a beauty. She was bigger. She was a lot of money. Now, one thing about this boat is it's not as much boat, and of course it's not as much money, is it? Yep. Uh, and it's a, it's a pretty interesting buy to get into your own Grand Banks. And if you want to make some modifications with it, remember that this is all wood, so you can make changes here. But I think this boat is very salty and it's really kind of fun to be in. I'd, I'd take a trip right now down that intercoastal waterway in a minute. Great retirement boat for some grandparents. If you're grandparents and you want to bring the kids along once in a while, this would be a swell boat to do it and they would have a ball. As a matter of fact, can I show you something? Sure. I'll tell you what, step aboard and let me show you something right up here. Oh. So, Rande, look who's here. <laughs> We've got grandchildren and children children and in-laws and sea dog and sea pup, I think, possibly. What do you think? <laughs> and Matilda, what do you think about this boat? Let's buy it. Let's buy it. Okay, can you tell the man with the orange hat, what do you think about it? I like it. I just like the basement with the bed a lot. <laughs> so, Randy. Yeah. I'm sitting on this boat, which is obviously floating, and I'm gonna give it a 10. Now, I have two helpers here, both of whom have had a good chance to go through the whole boat and think about it, right? Did you both think about the boat? Yeah. And you both said you had opinions about the boat. Mm -hmm. Now, I need a number from each of you, one at a time, okay. that we're gonna add to the 10 already. So, uh, I will start with you, Nolan. What number do you wanna add to 10? Eight. Eight. We have an eight now, we're now up to 18. Whoa, that's getting up there pretty fast. And for our last number. It's nine. Nine. Nine and 18 is what, 27? 27 for this beautiful Grand Banks 36 foot wooden trawler.
If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. So we're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>